it feel to be home? Good. I'm happy to be home. I need a nap. <laughs> I just heard a little bit of, where are you, back in the picture. <laughs> Hello, Charles is home. And I just heard something in the walls of the yurt. I think it may be a bat and we are going to investigate. We love bats, but we don't want one in the yurt. I think it's between the inner and outer valence. Um, there it is. Come on, there, dude. We decided not to worry too much about trying to keep the bat out because this will eventually be a screened in porch on this side of the yurt. Good morning. Charles has been to town to pick up some plywood and he's drawn up some plans for the drawers in both the kitchen and bathroom in the yurt. I wish I could say the transition back to projects was smooth and seamless after Charles got back from his trip. But it's 90 degrees this week, and there's no good place to stand and cut big boards around here. So Charles got set up to make the long cuts in the yurt, even though it will make quite a mess. Good morning. You can probably hear some heavy machinery. That's our neighbors trying to drill a well. They were down at 600 feet and they hadn't found water yet, so we feel very badly for them. And we're glad that we decided to go the route of rainwater collection ourselves. And we're hoping that they find water soon. Meanwhile, Charles has rigged up some shade the shade is not quite reaching him yet this morning, but it will be there soon as the day gets warmer. And he's working on the drawers for both the kitchen and the bathroom. So we tried an experiment in making some long cuts on the table saw, but it was pretty high up and the ground sloped away from it and I was not happy about tripping over a pile of scrap lumber, so we ended up bickering and we finally did get some cuts made and then... And I don't really know how. Those long cuts that I help, had you help me with were the wrong width. And I don't know how that happened. Because I set the rip fence at the size I needed, I thought. So what size were they supposed to be? A half inch bigger than what they are. I don't know how that happened. So I'm going to have to remake those cuts. Which means you need another board. No, I think I've still got enough board to get it all done, basically. So the cuts that were wrong, if they had been the drawer depth, this direction, I would have made them a half inch shorter and gone on. It's not that big a deal. 
but when they're this way, this was where they're half inch short. And I need the drawer glides have certain spacing on either side. So today is an air conditioner type of day. And Charles has been working outside all morning. It's 11 a.m. And I don't think he brought his water with him. Excuse me. Excuse you. Our subscribers on YouTube would like you to drink something. I would. Can't you hear them? No. Okay, subscribers, I will drink something. What it's am I drinking? Mint tea. Oh, good. So at this point, Charles had given up on the two-person method with the table saw, and he went back to the circular saw in the yurt. But a few hours later, he had a pile of all the right-sized pieces for the next step. What is going on over here? That's clean laundry. What are you doing? What's happening here, Charles? When I got back from my trip, I noticed that the bathtub was turning blue. And couldn't find out that's due to we have acidic rainwater and it basically uh, dissolving our any anywhere we have copper pipes like there's a copper coils in this tank here so the blue is coming from the copper so I'm in the process of changing out our two-stage filter to put in a three-stage filter and I'm adding a calcite neutralizing filter to make our water neutral instead of acid. But I got this new three-stage filter and put it all together and it leaked. So now I've had to take it all, all apart, reseal everything, and now I'm in the process of putting it back together. Good afternoon. Charles has been working on the joints in the drawers today. He's been carving grooves in them and making sure that they fit together properly. So let's take a look at how he does it. It's a drawer made with rabbit joints at the corners. And all these joints are made <clears throat> With a dado blade, I have an adjustable dado blade, and that works really nice to cut quarter inch grooves, and then cut, take quarter inch off the edge of that, and adjust it up to a half inch to make the grooves for the floor to, of the drawer to go in. So when I get all the grooves finished in that, I'll sand all this furry stuff off and then glue them all together. Normally a dado blade is a bunch of blades that you stack together to get the right width that you want to cut a groove. So you put, stack them in there, tighten them down and it's like a whole bunch of blades that cut the groove. With an adjustable one, it's got a little wedge on either side of the blade, and it basically wobbles the blade back and forth. So it'll cut the groove at the required width. And then you adjust that wedge in or out, and it increases or decreases the angle of the blade of the wobble. 
the fronts and backs just have a slot on this side where we'll stick the sides and it'll lock in there. When that's all glued together, it'll be really strong. I set it up earlier for the floor, which is a half inch, or slightly less than a half inch. And then I readjusted it to where it's cut in a quarter inch.